Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze. And we are continuing our coverage of this year's San Luis Obispo Film Festival. And I'm excited to talk to two documentary filmmakers uh, of a film called Vinyl Nation. I'd like to introduce Kevin Smokler and Christopher Boone. How are you guys? Vinyl, it, it's the only way to make uh, sound solid, like to bring it into our dimension. Listen, there's something sacred about the whole thing. 12 by 12, 33 RPM. Putting it on your turntable for the first time and dropping the needle on the record. It's magical. It's mind blowing. The thrill of what might be behind the door of that little shop. You know, I've never been stunned to find an MP3. What are you here for? Please. You have people who are actually all from different areas of life, different ages, different backgrounds. But when it comes to this thing, we're kind of mostly on the same page. You put that back in the sleeve, so that's your album. There are a lot of different ways that I could listen to a song. I keep listening to them on vinyl because of how it feels. What you're talking about is large groups of people who previously were not affluent enough to be targeted. It was very affordable, it sounded great. And then of course by the 1980s, the coming of the CD, record sales begin to fall off a cliff. It was like, no, why? It's here, why change it? It all came crashing down in the Napster era. People would bring in all their records and on top of the pile would be their turn to. It got worse before it got better. There was this sense that music was becoming ever more portable, but at the same time, there were people who were also interested in having music that they could hold in their hand. More and more people started making vinyl again. You all of a sudden realize that there's more and more stores opening up. I think we're seeing this pendulum swing back towards analog because we're gathering around together in a much more human way. It's a good thing to discover things that I didn't really live, but other people lived. We have each other's backs. It's an awesome sisterhood. <sighs> I'm not going to cry, Kevin. I only have faith in a couple of things. Music is one of them. Love is the other. Good to see you, Alex. Thanks for having us, man. Yeah, thanks so much. For sure. Good to see you guys. Uh, tell us a little bit about Vinyl Nation. Uh, Vinyl Nation is a feature-length documentary film about the comeback of records in the United States, Vinyl Records, over the last 15 years, and also the connective power of music and a new generation of vinyl lovers into an old medium. Very nice. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the directing aspect of, of the film. When you're putting together all the people that make the vinyls, that distribute it, that make the players and things like that, how was that putting that process together for you? Go ahead, Kevin, you get started and I'll pick up. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. um, no, it was great. Like, like part of it was we wanted to just see for ourselves. We wanted to see how records were made and, and, and who was in charge of the entire process of owning records because records are, records are complicated and, 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 and labor intensive in a way that listening to digital music isn't. You got to have a turntable. You got to have a place to put it. Records are heavy. And so we wanted to honor that and be true to that by showing all of the different components of record owning and where they come from. Uh, and also like when you make a movie called nation, you, that has nation in the title, you gotta, you gotta go to a lot of different places. Like sure. if, if we were just going to go to New York, Nashville and Austin and call it a day, which would have been easy. And we would have got, we would have gotten to talk to a lot of people. It really wouldn't have been true to the spirit of what we were doing. And so I guess we backed ourselves into a corner a little <laughs> bit by calling it vinyl nation off the top, because we had the name before we had any semblance of the movie. Sure. Yeah, but that also encouraged us to create a Google map and start <laughs> dropping pins on that Google map to make sure that we were covering that. And I think we sought out interesting places to go to, to find those people. So I don't, if, if we don't do that, I don't know if we end up in Salina, Kansas, in almost literally the dead center of the country at QRP, Quality Record Pressings, to see like how they manufacture records. And, and we went to them because everyone we talked to that was in the industry who was, you know, recording and, and mastering said, oh, but when you really want to have a fantastic record pressing, you've got to go to QRP. And it just kept coming up over and over again. 
and they're in Salina, Kansas. So I was like, okay, we, we'll figure this out. We got to go there. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and we just wanted to inter intercut all those different stories, the personal stories of the collectors with the manufacturers, with the record labels, and just really understand what is this emotional connection we all have to music in this physical format? And, and why is it coming back now, young and old and people of all different kinds? So that was yeah. really what intrigued us about it to get started. Yeah, I thought it was great how you guys talked about the uh, new, the generation like Gen Z and how they're looking at vinyls and that uh, Croxley, I think, was the, the company that makes the, the, uh, the record players uh, or the turntables showing how that's being uh, marketed towards that community, showing that they're the, they are now like a piece of their personality and so many succulents in, in the Instagram pictures of it, which I think is so spot on because if you go on Instagram and see it, there's a succulent next to every picture. But um, I wanted to ask you guys, where, where did this passion come from? Uh, did both of you guys uh, meet up and say, we both love vinyls, let's make a doc about it or, or where did it begin? Uh, Chris and I, neither Chris and I are old enough to have been first generation vinyl people. I, or maybe we just weren't cool enough to be first generation vinyl people. I was a pretty uh, cool five year old, but I just wasn't yeah, that cool. No, I did have some cool. records and yeah. I had a Fisher Price record player, Gosh. but you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we were both definitely generation Sony Walkman. And um, so we both are representative of the return of vinyl as opposed to its, its, its dominance in the, in, you know, for 50 years in the, in the earlier half of the history of recorded music. Right. Um, but the idea came from, I, I had the germ of the idea, which was, which was why is an old medium that is far less convenient suddenly becoming new again. Uh, and, in meeting Chris and he's an experienced filmmaker and I'm a rookie filmmaker and seeing some of his movies and saying, man, the guy really knows how to tell a story visually. I thought to myself, you know, is there something we can do with this? That's not me writing a book. That's my day job. And because records are physical, tangible things, that's part of what makes them special. And it's hard to capture that in words the same way one can capture it in the images. And so I just brought the idea to him and I did not know at the time that Chris had had his own uh, uh, return, getting into vinyl, you know, as, as an adult, as opposed to a kid. I, I, we, we'd never really talked about it. That was co a nice coincidence. Um, and Chris had never made a documentary and, and was not as fanatical about documentaries as I was. And, and so we, 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 at the beginning, we were just like, well, let's, we don't live in the same place. And so at the beginning, we were just like, let's just talk about it on the phone, you know, once a week and see if it goes anywhere. Yeah. Um, and we did that for six months until finally we decided it had to go somewhere. <laughs> um, All over the United States, from yeah. New York to Kansas to, um, you went to Maryland, uh, you were in California. Did you guys, you guys stopped at Amoeba? And then stopped at you check out the record parlor on Selma. You, see, you ever check that place out? Well, Kevin lives in the Bay Area. So Kevin yeah. gets to partake in all the fantastic record stores in that area. And actually, Amoeba Music was the first day of shooting. We we did our first week of shooting in the Bay Area, um, you know, as a, almost like a a pilot, if you will, just because it was Kevin's neck of the woods and we also had a lot of contacts there. Yeah, so Mark Weinstein, uh, Amoeba Music, first interview right off the bat. Um, yeah. But again, uh, <laughs> as Kevin likes to say, we kind of had this rule that we we wouldn't shop for records when, <laughs> while we were making this movie. So, you know, for somebody tough. who doesn't live in the Bay Area, going to Amoeba <laughs> and not buying a single thing was like, yeah. oh my god, like, like impossible. Yes, and like watching all the footage after the fact and literally our, our Sherry Calk or DP is just panning down racks and racks of rackets of records. Like, I want that one. I want that one. I want that one. I want that. So that's like, those are all there. Those are all there the day we shot. I don't, I don't have any of them in my collection now. Oh my God. Where Kevin, he could just roll back over there and be like, well, oh, okay. I'll just, yeah. I'll just pick up, I'll pick up a few records. Right. You know, so. Place. Yeah, we were, when we got to Amoeba that morning, it was, they, what we shot was like an hour before the store opened. And so we had a very, very small window of time before they had to let customers in. And that would be a lot of noise and they had to have music playing. It would make it practically impossible to get good footage. And at the beginning, they kind of shut us in, a, in, in like a, an employee break room upstairs where they're like, listen, get your gear out and stuff just so you're not in our way as we're restocking the shelves. We all looked at each other and we're like, perhaps it's for the best that we're up here and not amid the records because like that would, that, that would make for a, a totally distracted first day of shooting. Yeah. 
Oh, that's a, that's a great place. I used to live really close by there and I would walk down and get many, many things. So props to Amoeba for yeah. that. I also like learning about uh, Soundgarden. There was, uh, you had a nice segment uh, talking about the, the, con the, the artists and musicians that showed up to support Soundgarden. And then uh, people lined up down the street in order to pick up vinyls and then keep that art alive. I think that that was a really brilliant movement. And then you went all over the country talking about it. So it really just made me feel good to see uh, a documentary about vinyls, which I, I personally love, and I, I can uh, show you some in a minute after we wrap up. But um, I again, congratulations on the San Luis Obispo Film Festival uh, acceptance and screening. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say to the San Luis Obispo Film Festival uh, for this acceptance? Uh, you. Oh, oh okay. me? me. Uh, you, you, Chris. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. Uh, just really thank you. Um, we uh, we actually been working with the Slow Film Fest uh, back in the fall. We helped them out with the fundraiser using our film as a screener. And we're just really thrilled to be part of the, the full festival right now. They've just done an amazing job taking care of filmmakers, even though we're not in person uh, and, and setting things up like this so we can talk with people like you and the press. Um, it's, it's been a really fantastic experience and they've put together a fantastic collection of films that we really hope the, the audience that typically goes to the uh, Slow Film Fest and didn't get to go last year, like you said, they had to pull the plug right before it happens. Yeah. You know, just please support them. They've, they've got this fantastic catalog of, of films and some really great events that are going on in person, safely distanced. So again, hats off to that whole team. They're just fantastic. Yeah, we, we really couldn't be happier. One of the best things we've discovered making Vital Nation is how many great music and movie towns there are in the United States. You know, like you have the usual suspects, but when you learn about a place like San Luis Obispo and you're like, oh, they have Slow Film Festival, which is fantastic and runs like a Swiss clock. And then also they have Boo 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 Records and they have Cheap Thrills Records and they have KCPR, the greatest college radio station in the entire world. Yeah. They're the birthplace of Weird Al's music career. Like this is like, this is great stuff. And, and, and San Luis Obispo is special and unique in that way, but it's also not unique. There's like, there's, there's, there's two dozen music and film towns like that in the United States that we, I hope when it's safe to travel, we all spend some time visiting because we are, yeah. we are ridiculously lucky that way. Lots of good wine. They got good breweries over there. They yeah. have some good restaurants an awesome hotel. Uh, yeah, great downtown area, huge movie theater. Uh, they had like a nice cineplex so you can watch movies in different screens. Uh, I thought it was great. So I got a lot of love for them. And since I was told to have a little bit of time, I'd like to share with you guys a little bit of my personal collection of vinyls that yeah. uh, I think that would be uh, really cool to showcase. So uh, I am a vinyl collector as well. And I wanted to bring a couple here that I, I thought I would like to share. Uh, as I'm a New Yorker, I don't think any New Yorker who has vinyls should be without at least one Billy Joel vinyl. So certainly I have uh, 52nd Street. Obviously, it has amazing songs, My Life, Big Shot, and Honesty. So that's mm -hmm. one that I really enjoy. Uh, one that was passed down to me from, from my dad. He is a very big Tom Jones fan. There so you go. Tom Jones live in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, Tom Jones is not unusual, but he is one of the best of his time. Uh, when I was younger, I had a little thing with uh, Newmark. I, I did like a DJ phase where I, tr I just tried it out and enjoyed it. So I had a couple of vinyls. Jay-Z's Rockefeller Records for Encore. Sure. Uh, then, you know, if you're also New York, if you have a Beastie Boys vinyl, mm -hmm. <laughs> that one, no sleep till Brooklyn ever. I randomly had a Nelly vinyl as well. I don't know how that got in the collection, but I have it. So there it is. Uh, Dancing Queen for ABBA and Arrival. Another one that I very much enjoy. Almost there. Yin Yang Twins for a neck and they make rap. <laughs> on vitals as well and my closing one is junior senior which i think had some really awesome artwork because i loved how many bright colors and uh move your feet is one of uh, my favorite jams from that era so i That's just wanted great, to share man. that with you guys i wanted to bring a couple to say that i enjoy the vinyls vinyl nation great documentary definitely check it out uh chris boone and kevin smokers anything you'd like to say before we wrap up no, nah, man. Thank you. <laughs> thank appreciate you. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Vinyl Nation. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you.